Okay, what's going on? Marco here. Crazy story. I'm going to tell you what happened over the last few years. Um, and uh, I get a lot of questions, right? Like, uh, you know, what do you mean when you talk about the secrets of the 1% and all the, all the next level stuff, freedom, financial freedom, multiple streams of income, online, building assets, protecting assets, building an empire with a smartphone from anywhere in the world. What do you mean by all that? Automation, right? And this is simpler than people think. I'm not, I'm not the Mr. Genius, you know, gazillionaire guy. I just, I don't have to work anymore. And it's not that I don't work. I, I, I work, but it's because I want to, not because I have to, it's a game now, but it, but before it wasn't, you know, it, it wasn't a game. It was stressful. I wasn't financially educated. Um, and some of you may, may know my story. Some of you may not, or know, you know, who I am or whatever, but um, I have a, there's a lot of lessons in my story and I didn't really know what I did when I did it back then, but now I do. And I'm able to framework it out for people. And we've helped thousands and thousands of people literally change their life. And, and um, if you hang in here for, I don't know how long this is going to be 10, 15 minutes, but I'm guarantee it's going to be worth your time. I'm going to show you one slide that literally changed my life, uh, principles of money and all of it. So, um, it's, you know, started way back, way back when, when, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure you were told and think about this, where have you been told you got to go to school, get a safe, secure job. You got to go to school, get a safe, secure job. The smarter you are, the more money you make. You got to work hard your whole life, work 40, you know, 50 hours a week for the next 40 years of your life. And then, and then when you tire, you retire like 65, 70, then you get to live and travel the world and be free and be with your, your family. Right. And that's a plan. It's just not, my plan and you know it's kind of like for normal people and i'll just die before i'm normal and once you taste that next level you, you'll kind of see what i mean but um so i was told that i was brought up poor you know inner city some of you may know my story but uh we struggled and there there was alcohol in the you know alcoholism in the family and drugs and single parent you know and um, i was the poorest kid in the school basically and they used to call me the holy one, literally, because not because it's spiritually holy, but because I had holes in my shoes and my jeans and the girls used to make fun of me. And so um, the only way I was going to go to college is if I got a soccer scholarship. So I was playing soccer. And uh, but then, you know, God put a skateboard in my life and I I've had found my passion early. And man, I just I've, I wanted to do that. And that's all I wanted to do is be a skater, right? So I quit soccer. Everyone freaked out on me. I graduated high school and then I wasn't going to college. And uh, man, I got, I got to hear it from everyone, right? Like, you know, I mean, every, everybody, you're not going to college, you know, but, 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 and so um, I even went to this, like <laughs> this, the, you know, for the mess ups, they sent us to career education center uh in high school for people that were never going to go to college and you know be it like they i tried out construction and just a bunch of weird stuff you know mechanics i didn't like any of that stuff um so i graduated high school and i just was skating i just wanted to be a skater but after a minute my dad you know he he calls me up and he's like what the f are you gonna do with that stupid skateboard you need to go to school and get a job go to school get a job go to school get a job and somehow he came up with uh, $800. And I knew he was broke and he came up with that money. And I felt so guilty that I gave up on all my dreams. And I started, you know, I, I got two classes down at Metro in Denver to, so I can go to school and get some safe, secure job and work for somebody my whole life and build somebody else's dreams for them. You know, uh, luckily I had some good friends that I met through skateboarding that were moving up to Vail. And they're like, we're going to skip school for a couple of years and go back to college in like a year or two, but we're going to move up to Vail and be ski bums. Uh, you want to go, you know? <laughs> and I was just like, and I just took off out of there, went up to Vail and started meeting the right people. I didn't know what I did when I did it, but I changed my environment. You got to change your environment or else you're going to continue to get the, get what you got. Right. But um, I ended up, living every dream. I you know, became a pro snowboarder for over 17 years. I mean, there's a lot of lessons in there that I won't go over, but um, I ended up living every dream I ever had because I did the opposite of what all the normal people were telling me to do, right? 
and there's lessons in there. If you take advice from normal broke, you know, struggling month to month, paycheck to paycheck people, and you do what they do, you're going to get the same results. Right. And all the wealth books, they say, don't do that. Do what, look for the people who have the life that you want and that have proven results and only ask them for advice and you'll get those results. Right. So um, I, I, I learned a lot from that, you know, and I've been speaking about it since, because I, I just believe if you love what you do, that's success. doesn't matter the money. Right. So, um, because if you love it, you're just going to do it a lot. All right. So then skip, skip over a little bit. I had read the book called, I mean, millionaires were telling me to read this book right here. Rich dad, poor dad, rich dad, poor dad by Robert Kiyosaki. I'm going to give you some lessons out of the next wealth books. Um, because it's literally life-changing. I mean, simple stuff like, you know, you can't have your dreams if you're building somebody else's business for them, building somebody else's dreams, right? You'll never have your own. And, and things like, you know, employees get taxed to death. It's the business owners that get all the tax breaks and it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And employees don't keep anything. They're penalized for not being business owners, right? So most people, you can never get ahead or create wealth without getting your taxes down to a legal minimum. And employees get burned by taxes, not because we're not financially educated, right? And I've, I'd had, I had tons of jobs before pro snowboarding. I, man, I would do overtime. I'm a hard worker. Every time I'd get my check, I'd, I'd just wonder, what the hell, where'd all the money go? Like, because it's all taken, you know, taxes, right? Anyway, millionaires have told me to read that book for years, and I'm, I was so pissed when I finally read the book. I'm like, oh, I can't believe I waited that long. I should have never waited that long. I should have listened to him because it tells you all this stuff. And so I'm like, man, I, I, you know, I can't, okay. I can't go from half a million or more per year, you know, making a bunch of money, having a lifestyle to some crappy dead end job, you know, working for somebody else doing something I hate or whatever. So I'm like, I got to launch, I got to stop. And it says, stop making other people rich. Right. So I'm like, oh, I got to start making myself rich. I started launching companies. So, uh, you know, you got to take the risk to get the reward. Right. And so I started launching companies. The first four failed. Right. And, uh, but we learned, so it's not, it's not a failure. Most people are scared to fail. So they never even try. Right. And you got to fail. There's no way around failing. And it's not a failure. It's feedback. And, and you actually learn every time. So we learned and that was a win. That was those were wins because we learned what not to do. Pretty soon we got successful. And after all a lot of stuff, um, we learned what not to do. We started getting successful and we can you know, build and explode businesses. But man, that didn't get me anything I wanted. It just got me like if you look at any successful people thought I was successful. Yeah, you can make a lot of money, but you have zero life. So I went from traveling and being free and being around my kids to being super busy in traditional old school business. The more successful you get, the more busy you are. The more employees, overhead, buildings, management, you know, insurance, mark, like all the attorneys, it just gets, I mean, the, the bigger, the crazier. And it, it sucks up all your time. So most people don't own their businesses. It owns them and all their time. And so that's the, basically the same as a job. If you stop working, you stop getting paid. It's called linear income, right? Um, so then, you know, I had kids in the process and everybody's like, you know, I, I, I really started to pay attention and read a lot of stuff because I had to get free. I was, I was missing time with my kids. So when I was six years old, my dad was there. Like he, you know, he was, I remember wrestling with him in the living room. That was my favorite thing to do in the world was wrestle with my dad in the living room. That was my favorite thing. Right. And then when I was seven, he, he got, he found a job in Florida and then he was just gone. So I literally like, waited in that living room for like years. I remember that really clearly. I never wanted to do that with, with my kids. And, and, but as soon as I got successful, I was doing that. And I was missing all the most important years of my first two kids lives. And I was just so painful. I'll never get that time back. I don't even like to talk about it cause I'll cry. It's just, it was, it was. And so I, I really had to get open to newer, better ideas. And they say in all the wealth books, they say, look for the people who have the life that you want and figure out what life you want and then find out who has their life and ask them questions. Right. So that's what leads us to all this laptop lifestyle, you know, building assets, financial education stuff. 
And so I'm looking at my friends, Derek, Travis, Scott, these guys are always with their kids. They're back and forth to Costa Rica. Those people you see on the golf course on a weekday that used to bug me so bad. Like, what do you, how are you on the golf course on a freaking weekday? It takes, it takes all day, dude. Don't you work? Like what? So I'm like, what, what do you guys do? Like, what do you do? And they're like giggling. I'm like, no, like, wh- like, what do you do? Like, how does it work? So that's what leads us to like, I, I call it old school versus new school. Okay. So old school is where everybody kind of goes to the store and buys things. Right. So I used to go to GNC and buy my vitamins and all that kind of stuff and grocery store, you know, get your stuff. That's not the producer though. That's the middleman. Right. So they buy it low and then they double the price. They sell it to the customers. And usually there's a couple of middlemen in there, people making money, right? 80% of the money is lost in marketing and middlemen and that old school business models. But now everybody knows you can buy direct, right? So my friend, Derek, 35 year old retired millionaire, 35 year old retired millionaire goes, what, what, are you, what are you doing, man? Why are you going to GNC to get your vitamins? You buy direct from a science company, right? So I, I start to get the picture and um, you know, so now I'm buying direct, right? I just, it hits my credit card, ships it to my house. But if I'm loyal, just like the grocery store gives you a loyalty card, cause that's where all the, the money is the comeback customer. That's where they make all the money, all the, every, everything in your house, the lights, the gas, the, the, the Wi-Fi, your phone, they want you on subscription, loyal customers, right? And you get incentives, discounts, rewards for being loyal. So when I would buy stuff, if it's just automatically shut me a perfect month supply of my vitamins, they cut it. They, they give me 30% kickback. Every time I do that, it hits my card, 30% kickback in free product and points waiting for me on my next purchase. So it's not a hundred bucks. It's 70, right? Cheaper, better, faster, right to my doorstep. But every time it does that, Derek gets a little commission because he's the one that connected the customer to the company. And he's going to get that commission every month for the rest of his life whether he likes it or not, because I'm not going to stop using, you know, taking my vitamins, taking care of myself, personal care items, whatever. And I'd buy direct from a science company, no middleman. Right. So he's like the invisible middleman. That's what everybody does. All the big smart money, Uber, they don't make any cars. Like they don't have cars, right. They just connect the customer with what they're looking for. They're the invisible middleman, Airbnb. They don't have any houses. They just connect me, you know, with what I'm looking for and help me find what I'm looking for. Right. Amazon, think about how, how they make money. What's their value. They don't make any of that stuff. They connect the customer with what they're looking for, invisible middlemen. So literally it's not hard to learn. It's easy. That's one way of creating this residual automated income, right? So I I was ferocious about learning this stuff. Everybody thought I was crazy. I was really excited. And and that's what brings us into this world. But I'm going to show you a slide right now that is completely life-changing. And once you wrap your head around this, you will never want to put your time into anything else because I'm telling you, there's nothing better. If you're going to invest your time into something, everybody's going to spend time getting good at something. You're going to spend the next 10 years getting good at something. But most of the time, people invest time getting good at a skill that will keep them super busy forever because if they stop working, they stop getting paid. And it's linear income. All right. So now I'm going to sh- skip over here and share this slide with you so I can go through it. So one sec. Okay. So now this right here is called the cash flow quadrant. There's it's uh, there's a book by Robert Kiyosaki called the cash flow quadrant, but these, this is basically what's in all the wealth books, the principles of money right here. Okay. And what are your chances of winning the game if you don't even know the rules, right? If you're playing soccer or football or anything against a team and they know all the rules, right? And you don't even know the rules to the game. What are your chances of winning, right? Not a lot. So this is the principles of, of money and wealth, financial freedom, education kind of stuff. And so quadrant, meaning there's four parts, okay? So most people somewhere around 94% of people are employees. They're employed, right? And so on the left side, you see the E and the S quadrant. The E is employee, the S is self-employed and and you see the word active. So that that means you actively have to work to get the money, right? And if you stop working, you stop getting paid. It's also called linear income because you're trading your time for money and there's no leverage. Like, you know, you're getting 100% of one person's effort, which is your own. So you actively have to work for it. Okay. And if you're in the E quadrant as an employee, well, like, like Rich Dad says, 
you can't have your dreams if you're building somebody else's dreams, right? Somebody else's business. And employees don't have any tax breaks. It's the business owners that get all the tax breaks. And it's not what you make, it's what you keep. So you can never create wealth without getting your taxes down to a legal minimum. So that's why you must have a side hustle so you can have write-offs, tax breaks, right? So that usually doesn't work. The employee, I mean, it's a, it's, you know, we were told that and it's, you can do it. Um, and it's, it's normal, nothing wrong with it, but it's just, you know, it's a long time, you know, 40, 50 years of hard work to end up with not a lot, which is, those are the statistics, not me saying that these are the statistics of the, the Bureau of the census, you know, and, uh, Social Security Administration, you have a 95% chance of being either dead or dead broke when you're 65 if you do any of the normal stuff. So the next logical step would be to be self-employed, right? Or the S stands for small business or self-employed. And um, it also stands for smart people. But there's a problem with smart people. And here's the catch to the whole game, okay? Okay. Smart people have a really hard time getting into the right side of this quadrant into bigger business, thinking bigger because they're always trying to be smart and it's very hard for them to surrender to simple systems. So let me give you an example. Self-employed, you know, doctors, lawyers have their own little practice, right? Um, professionals, small business, salon owners, skate shop, whatever. Well, if you have a small business, here's the problem. Um, I know, you know, I mean, even family members, they're attorneys, right? And uh, really smart people. But they're so badass that, um, you know, the more titles you put behind your name, the less anybody can take your place and do that job for you while you, you know, if you wanted to be gone, right? Think about a surgeon. You put a bunch of titles behind your name, doctor, and you get really good at what you do, right? Well, nobody can do your job. Cause you're just, you're that good. Right. So you'd rather be at Disneyland with your kids or traveling the world or, or whatever, but you can't, because if you stop working, you stop getting paid. So basically all they did is they bought themselves a job. That's the same as a job. If you stop working, you stop getting paid. It's called, it's, you know, it's linear. Right. So the hardest thing to do to get your brain into thinking bigger, where you're on this passive side of the quadrant Here's the biggest catch. It's really hard for smart people to surrender to simple systems because they're always trying to be smart and reinvent the wheel and you know show everybody they're smart, right? So my problem was I, I got into small business and man, you just get stupid busy. And as a pro snowboarder and you know business person, like same thing. I just got myself really busy and nobody can take my place, right? Nobody can do the job that I do or be me. So same thing, I had to be humble, coachable, and listen to the people who had the life that I wanted so I can actually get those results. And so this is an invite to think at a really high level, okay? Like think like McDonald's. Now think about this. Do you, do you ever see the owner of McDonald's working in the building, working, right, for the money? Why not? Like it's because... He didn't make the best burgers. He made the best system. And that means any high school dropout can run that building if they just follow the manual, follow the system, right? So, because it's simple. And so you, I mean, you could get a better burger down the street with a genius chef that's super smart and does the best burgers, right? But he'll never, or she will never make more money than McDonald's because she, it's her running the business, not the system running the business. Does that make sense? And so it's very hard to duplicate yourself in, in franchise, right? And so bigger, like big business, you have systems. Like I can even get a loan right now on a McDonald's if I wanted one, because the bank knows they're going to get their money back. It's a proven step-by-step -step system. So remember that because we've created systems and we know business vehicles with the right systems that you can follow. That's really, it's all learnable. You know, I'm not the biggest gazillionaire genius. I just paid attention, followed the systems, was humble, dropped my ego so I can be coached and learn things I didn't know before so I can get what I never had before, right? And once you do that and you, you learn how to follow systems and then you can lead with the system and then pretty soon you can teach other people and have systems running your business, you can move into bigger business.
right? And so that's the big shift is surrendering to, to proven step-by-step systems that actually work and they can work for you. In fact, you're watching this video right now and it's not going to be me live doing the video for you, right? Face-to-face. Literally, I have YouTube or Facebook or whatever doing the work for me, sharing information in the information age, and you can make a lot of money by sharing information in the information age, right? It's not the industrial age anymore where you got to work hard your whole life. Work hard. You got to work hard, you know, work smart, right? And when things are online, they're 24 hours. So you literally can make money while you sleep. And in fact, I'm getting paid out of 17 countries right now. And I have multiple streams of income and assets that are making me money, whether I work or not. So being in that right side of the quadrant, you're creating building business assets, investing in, in, in assets, and then protecting those assets for a financial fortress around yourself and your family that nothing can penetrate. So when you build things like that, automation, leverage, duplication, not as hard as it, because I'm like, again, these are simple, but when, because I did that, I moved into a kind of bigger business. Now I'm able to move into the I quadrant where I invest in other things, right? So I've been investing and I have the money working for me. I'm not working for the money. So on the right side, you have assets like, you know, real estate and all, I have other videos on all the different kinds of assets that we've built. But, you know, when you have big teams of people in business that just runs by itself, then, you know, you have multiple streams of income and they work for you, whether you work or not, and you're still bringing in the income. Like think about, you know, if you have 20 fully paid off houses, it's not you working for the money, right? You have rental properties and it's the asset that's bringing you in the money, not you working for the money. So that is so important to get on the right side of the quadrant and surrender to be humble, coachable. So you can actually get into there and, you know, not just kind of, here's what most people do and why they struggle. They kind of go, no, 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 thanks. No, I'm not interested. No, I'll never. And they say no to everything because the radio is trying to say something. The TV is trying to say something. So you're programmed. We are all programmed to say no before we even know what we're saying no to. And so that's what's sabotaging most people. And so most people struggle month to month because they say no and they make all these decisions, but they don't even know what they're saying no to, right? So they're making uneducated decisions. So it's important to be open because the world changes so fast every day that you have to be open for information and grab the information so you can, you know, at least take it in so you can make your own decision. But now you're making an educated decision. So you have to be open to all this stuff. And then you can make your more educated decisions. And it's funny when you take advice from the right people that have the life that you want, life changes for you. And uh, it literally happens in like less than 10 years. So you're looking at, you know, would you rather work 30, 40 years, you know, 40 hours a week for the next 30 years, like they told you to do to read and to end up with nothing or Invest in yourself, not money investment so much as time, the time investment into yourself to learn these things from proven people and you turn it into a 10 years, you know, so you work on your job, your business full time, you got to do what you got to do, bring in the money, right? But you got to work on your fortune part time and gradually, if you're consistent and you show up for yourself, you know, seven to, to nine years, 10 years, you have built yourself some assets that'll pay you for the rest of your life. It's called, it's called a residual income, not linear income. There's a, if you knew the power of what, what happens, you know, to your life, when you create residual income, you would run through a brick wall to get it. So I have a seven-year-old right now. My first two kids, you know, I miss some, it's so painful. I miss some of the most important years of their lives. And I, I, I had to learn, you know, things I didn't know before and I had to be open, but this guy, I've been able to move my whole family over here to Carlsbad we you know we would live like towards the beach and I surf twice a day and and I'm here for my kid when he wakes up I cook him breakfast I get him to school I go surf when he gets home I'm actually here I'm a present dad and he's seven right now and his favorite thing to do is battle with me in the living room and wrestle right his number one thing to do priceless because I'm here I'm a present dad and there's nothing better. 
right? So it's uh, it's not easy, you know? I don't like to say it's easy and like, oh, I'll make 10,000 with my simple system and all the crap that you see out there. There's a lot of hokey stuff. So you got to do your due diligence and ask the right people, right? But I'm telling you, it's it's worth it. It's so freaking worth it to put a, just put a fraction of your energy into yourself and into the right business vehicles that can set you free. And then life changes and it, it's... It's not quick, but man, five years can go by pretty quick and you're, you've set yourself up, right? So uh, from here, if that stuff makes sense, don't be afraid. Get the courage, reach out, right? Ask questions. I was skeptical. Don't worry. Be skeptical. Bring all your skepticism, but look at the information first so then you can make an educated, educated decision, right? And so we have vehicles and we know exactly what to do. Don't listen to media and, and a bunch of news anchors that don't own business and don't know what they're talking about. These nasty politicians that have never had a business before. They don't know what they're talking about either. You got to look for people that actually have the life that you want and ask them, right? So don't be afraid. I'm going to probably embed this video or put this a few places. So look for the button, click to the next link. You know, uh, if you, if it's an email, throw your email in there to get the next videos or go to the next steps uh, reach out, ask questions. If you, if someone shared this with you, ask them for more information, reach back out, say thank you because it's valuable stuff. I'm hoping that made sense for you and uh, we'll see you on the next pages. We'll see you on the next steps. Much love guys. Talk soon.